All right. Um, I'll read the testimony. I know you're getting testimonies this morning. Um, one time finished to read with you to carry into prophetic ministry. Very good prophetic ministry. All right. Let me let me read the testimony here. And um, uh, he said the pleasant drinking in the spirit of thanksgiving and not being forgetful of what God has done. I thought his message preached to testify to the faithfulness of God. I'm taking this because it was sent from out of the country. All right, faithfulness of God before his people, following the words of David in Psalm 22, verse 2, and what he wrote, um, what is written there is, I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you, which is a deeply spiritual thing to do. During my NYSC, I decided I will pursue my graduate studies abroad via scholarship. I started application process in 2020. I applied for several scholarships, including graduate assistantships in schools across the United States, Canada, Europe, among others, but got rejected. During the 2020 planting, fasting, planting and fasting program, I declared the three things I wanted done in 2021. And he put in bracket, all of which are already done. In 2021, amidst the rejections, I kept making the scholarship applications and kept confessing God's word that he had given me alongside my personal confession. And I've said this here, that I have never seen any person who experienced disappointment and went through that and kept their confession, kept going in worship, kept the right attitude, kept serving God, that did not come out with something much better. All right, so it says, I remember during the praise, all right, some other people will have thrown in the tower, we have gotten angry, we did fasting and this, we did that, why are they not giving me, but I confessed it four times, I did it throughout the watches and then get angry, get upset. I remember during the praise fast in June and throughout the month, I gave thanks to God that I was already in Europe by December 2021. All right, I was locked down to read this testimony because of the spirit of Jaguar in this country. <laughs> but but I have resolved it in my, in my heart, okay? And to the glory of God, between July and September, I got three prestigious scholarship offers, two in Europe and one in South Africa. And it says, men and brethren, God is faithful. He can be trusted. The word works, all right? He's a member of TCN in Ibadan. Because the bottom people called me to say that's our member. They claim the, <laughs> they claim the testimony. All right. In conclusion, men and brethren, let us hold hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For faithful is he that promised. And he says, one of the best decisions I made in January 20, 20, 2019 was to become a full-fledged citizen of the covenant nation. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's take a confession this morning. I'm going to get into the message. One to go. As I sit to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go. Walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I am not distracted by anything or anyone. The word of God is folded to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and enablement to live out God's will. All right, I'm teaching this morning on the subject it is, all right, Thanksgiving, so I will share briefly. And then we will get into the business of the meeting, I want to say business now, that is to give thanks unto God. 
Uh, thanksgiving is a form of giving, but what you are giving to God in this case is thanks. Uh, you are coming with something and presenting it unto the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Father. And while I was thinking about it, what angle we should take concerning Thanksgiving, all right, what entered into my heart was to speak on the subject of the forgetfulness of man. There is something inside the human nature that when they get into a place of need, there is a tendency inside them to completely forget the things that God has done for them in the past. And I'll start out by sharing a story uh, that was written in the book by a man by the name of Pastor Jack Hayford, who used to be the general overseer of Foursquare Global. And he speaks about an experience he had in his childhood while he was very young. And he says that there was an aunt of his that came to visit them during the Thanksgiving celebration in America. And she was well-to-do, all right? And so she came to see them in the house and said to them that you children come together and there's something I want to do. I want you to, all right, count your blessings. I want you to mention the things that you are grateful to God for that he has done for you, all right, this year or in your life or this year. And he said, and she said to them, if you do that, for every single thing that you mention, I will give you 50 cents. Now, these were very young children. This was probably in the 40s or so, all right? And so, he said, at the particular time he was writing the book, will have amounted to $5 for every single thing you say. And to a child, this was his gateway to becoming a millionaire as a child. All right, and they were all agitated and all of that. And suddenly she said, all right, here's the money, let's start. And what are the things? And suddenly he said he froze and he was like he choked within. And he could not remember anything and began to struggle. Finally, he could get four things out of his mouth and he was given $2 for it. He said later on in life, when he became a minister, he came to realize what actually happened to him and that he had learned a lesson. And this was a lesson that was very integral in the human nature. And we'll see this here, that we are not rational beings. Human beings are not rational. We think we are rational. We want to give an explanation for why and what we did, all right? But sometimes these things are just triggers within our consciousness coming from places where we actually don't know where the thing came in that made us make or causes us to make such decisions. And he said he learned that our human capacity to receive is dysfunctional in a direct proportion so our desperate need to get. In other words, your desperation to get something actually affects your ability to receive that particular thing from God. That is, the more desperate you are for it and you're trying to get it in with that desperation, the less likely you tamper with your capacity to be able to receive that particular thing from God. That's why the Bible says we need to enter into rest. It is people that have entered into rest concerning the things that they really want. It is those people, right, that expand their capacity and put themselves in a position to receive. The reason why was that he said it was the money they placed before him, all right, that caused all of the problem. Because the minute they gave him the $2 and money was no longer on the table and it was all gone, he suddenly started remembering. He said, my goodness, why didn't I just say I thank God for my nose? I thank God for my eyes. And start from the top, for my hair, for the strands, strand 100. Strand, and it would have been scriptural to say that, for God numbers eight. And go to his toenails. He said, I will have been clocking money. But the problem was, once that pressure was there, 
I, something just happened to him, and he, all right, just forgot everything and began to struggle. And what I want to share here is about the forgetfulness of man when we get into such situations. That is, we simply forget the things that God has done for us in the past. And he went on and said this, that he now said another law, which is true, and I'll use this. He said, our capacity to receive is functional, all right, to our capacity to give. In other words, you show what you can receive by what you are, all right, you, you are allowing yourself to give. What you release shows. And that law is found in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And where is the law? Here it is. For with the same measure that you meet or you give is that which will be measured back unto you again. So the measure you give determines what you receive, but what you now receive can be affected, all right, by your desperation there. And that's why the Bible says be anxious for nothing. You have to remove that sense of anxiety from it, all right, but in everything with supplications by supplication, prayers and supplications with thanksgiving. And it's thanksgiving that dissolves that anxiety, that removes it out of your consciousness. I want to share this, that brings you into a place of rest. You know, many years ago, this probably would have been 16 or so years ago. I had a friend in school, I hadn't seen her, all right, for years. I mean, I went to a school, so I hadn't seen her for years. So I went to her and we were talking, was it 16? Maybe not, but what gisted. And we gisted up to the point of, you know, her getting married. And she was very, I mean, she was getting older and older, but she was very, I, I have never seen a person that calm, that unbothered, all right? And everybody in her family had married, she was not bothered, she was calm. She just was like, you know, not bothered at all. And I learned a very deep lesson. Because when she finally got married, I mean, if I tell you who the person is, who she married, 80% of people here will know. All right? In fact, somebody in church, a minister, got a job somewhere, and her husband invited him for dinner. And um, uh, the wife was telling me, said, our child just embarrassed us. We got into that place. We were looking at him. He said, because as we sat down, he looked around. He said, this house looks like a hotel. Are you a billionaire? You must be a billionaire. She says, this is boy. Keep quiet. We came here to eat dinner. All right? You are saying, this looks like a billionaire's house. I mean, I mean so I learned a deep lesson that, you know, when you, you are anxious, there's that desperation there, all right, to get, and you are trying. And Jesus said, did you take thought for you to grow? He said, listen. Do you know that you never took thought one day and you grew? Which means this anxiety interferes with the blessing. This, this aluta thing interferes with the blessing. Are you following me? I've said this when you are trying to get. I mean, um, Dr. Benny Hinn said this, but Pastor Benny Hinn. He said he asked a friend of his, a mentor of his, not a friend, all right? He said, what's the key to the flow with the Holy Spirit? He said, don't try. Now, it doesn't mean don't desire. It doesn't mean don't receive. But don't try to produce only what God can give. And when you get into that situation, I advise you here. And you have tried everything you want to. Just go into worship. And just, and just start worshiping God and thanking him every single day and enter into the place of rest. The reason why I say this is that we stand right now on the threshold, all right, of a Thanksgiving service where we want to come and thank God at the end of the year for the things that he has done this year. And, you know, people may be here, and we've said it's Thanksgiving, and you say, well, they say we should come and thank God. And so you just come to thank God and, and to dance to the music or to sing to the songs that you like. And Thanksgiving is beyond a song, all right? Thanksgiving is beyond a dance. Thanksgiving starts with a feeling in you. It is that feeling you are expressing in words. It is that feeling you are expressing in a dance, but it's actually a feeling on the inside of you. It is something within your soul that you are now expressing to God, either through a song, dance, 
or any way or sense of or even helping other people. All right, that it could be a, that you are, it's a thanksgiving thing. You are helping other people from, from the abundance that God has blessed you with. It can be a thanksgiving, all right, offering, but it is a feeling. So it is offering up. It's just like, let me just give an example. Let's say somebody, you know, you, you know needed, needed a, a car and, and walked out into a place and someone says, here's a key brand new car. He says, you don't mean it, you don't mean it. Now, a feeling comes upon that person and it takes that feeling to God saying thank you. That's where thanksgiving actually starts. So this thing is deeper than just saying it's the end of the year. All right, which means traditionally either last Sunday of the year or first Sunday of, of, of December or last Sunday or first Sunday of January, we go and give thanks and we dress up to do that. No, it's about the expression of a feeling. And so in openness there, people may be seated here and say, well, we want to go into a Thanksgiving. To be honest with you, you say to yourself, the things that I wanted God to do this year, you know, those things have not happened. There are things that I prayed about. There are things that I believe God for. Or I have had certain experiences this year that I didn't think about. I didn't, you know, desire to happen within my life. These things have, have set me back, all right? Naturally speaking, my business hasn't gone the way it should go. The career did not go the way. And so you've come into this place and there is some sorrowfulness and heaviness that is inside your heart, you know. And then they say, well, let's thank God. You say, let's sing to start. At least just, just sing and see this. But thanksgiving starts with that feeling there. And I want to show you something here about the forgetfulness there of man. That is true. That you may have entered and come into this place and you just experience some disappointment or even let's say this year. All right, your business did not go in all the way you wanted it or something. Or your marriage, you know, or there's something you are believing. I'll admit that could be your situation. But that law should not affect your thanksgiving. And I want to show you a law. And probably if things haven't changed, for I read in a book, and I agree with the gentleman that wrote it. He said, when you see a person putting other principles to make progress in life to work, and you do not see commensurate progress, go and check gratitude. Which means what you should look at is whether they understand the law of gratitude. Where there are people that offer thanks to God, their creator and their maker. Uh, a friend of mine, I heard him say this, he was preaching somewhere. He said that they understood the power of thanksgiving. He said, I, I'd gotten saved and all of that and I had a condition, I think it was ill. He said, I confessed and I confessed and I confessed. And it wasn't working. I said, look, this thing works. He said, and then some, it was like the Holy Spirit ministered and said, go into thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a form of confession. All right? And I began to give thanks and offer the calves of my lips in thanksgiving. He said, the power of God hit me. So there's gratitude that must come from your heart to God. Luke chapter 17, verse 12. Let's just see something about gratitude here. The Bible speaks about ten lepers. And he entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, Lepers weren't even till that. We're not allowed to mingle with people so that they don't transmit the thing. So they stood afar off. They couldn't come in. And these men here lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. All right? That's why we have back. We called it the power of mercy. All they said was, this was their only prayer. Have mercy on us. That's all they said that changed their condition. All right? And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves to the priests. All right, so he gave them a commandment, an instruction. And the Bible says that it came to pass. They didn't get healed instantly, but as they went, as they were going, something happened in their body. As they were obeying Jesus, something hit their body, and the Bible says they were cleansed. Now, what happened was one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. There were ten. Only one turned back. Jesus will not, you won't have this kind of story if it's not representational for humanity. Only 10% of people show gratitude. Are you following what I'm saying? Only, and it doesn't matter what you did to them. If you are an employer of labor, you will know that it doesn't matter is whether it is the nature of that person. 
All right? Because you can give more money to somebody and they will still not show gratitude for it. It is how they are. So it says this. And one of them, when they saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And verse 16. And fell down at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. In other words, he wasn't Jewish. That's, Jewish people had a sense of entitlement at that particular point in time. And you also have got to understand the longer you are in the faith, the more entitled you may become. All right? Young Christians are not entitled. Uh, old Christians start saying all kinds of things, how they have served God. And entitlement begins to come into it. And it says here, and he fell down at his face. All right? Now, go back to it. 16. Giving thanks, and he was a Samaritan. 17. The Bible says, and Jesus answered and said, were not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that returned to give glory to God except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, and you will see in the ministry of Jesus, those that surprised Jesus were strangers. When he said, I have not seen faith like this in the whole of Israel, it was a Roman centurion. It was the Syrophoenician widow. They were not. And that's why at the beginning of his ministry, he said, were there not many widows in Israel? Why did he, why was Elijah sent? The longer you are, the more entitled you become. And you take things for granted. And so you have to, the only way to do it is to constantly practice this. And he says this here. And he said, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Now, he was cleansed already. So what was Jesus saying when he said whole? That word whole is different from the word cleansed in the Greek. The word whole means that nothing will be missing in your life from henceforth. Nothing will be broken. All things are now complete. You are totally restored. In other words, he was saying if you had a business before this leprosy came and you lost all that business, restoration is coming to the whole thing. He was saying, listen, if some people had left your life, if you know you had now become a stigma, socially speaking, so there are certain things you would have missed, all right? He says, all those things are now restored back unto you. It's not just healing, it's the restoration. So you go back to the state you would have been had it been you did not have this leprosy. Which means that if what happened to you, you had, you, you twisted your kneecap and it has been in, it has been in pain, all right, since then, he says the kneecap also is healed. All right? If you had a scar somewhere, I know that the scar is gone. Every other thing concerning your life, all right, you are made complete and you are made whole. And it's a law with God. So there can be emptiness everywhere and a dot of one thing good God has done. If you focus on the emptiness and you come depressed, then you miss the point of God. If you zero in on one thing, for example, they brought five loaves to Jesus. What did they say? Giving it to him. They said, we have five loaves here, but what is this among so many? In other words, there is a blessing, but you say, what is this? In other words, this year, look, this thing is, no, 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 look, 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 well, the big things did not happen. But Jesus said, give them to me. And as he began to give thanks, they saw that inside of that small thing was locked every other thing that will happen within their lives. So there are things that God has done that serve as containers for those things you are depressed about. Are you following what I'm saying? Look, my friend, let's leave counseling alone. You want to solve marital problems? People are angry at themselves? Let's just go back to the photographs when you were getting married and how you were dancing. You brought the person. We did not bring the person for you. You chose the person. When they asked you, you said, among all women or among all men, no other but this one. You were not mad when you said it. So you saw something in that person that now the Bible says that uh, um, hatred means to love less, has blinded. You can't see any good in that person again. That is the real problem. So you can both not talk to yourselves because you are so angry now. Just when you enter your room, look for anything in that person you can give thanks for. 
even if it's the nose, all you can now see is that the nose is just, is the nose sha is the only thing. Start thanking, don't talk to yourself. So both of you start thanking God for the nose. Or this one, the hair. Well, she dresses well, sha. I must give that one to her. She's fashionable. Oh yeah, start thanking God. Thank you for the vibe. As you begin to thank him for it, it starts spreading. You will start seeing more good things in it. Where problem comes is you take each other for granted. As we say it in our language, Nasi finish. <laughs> so this happens and we forget. Mark chapter 8, verse 14. I have 10 more minutes. Let me go. Mark 8, verse 14. Now, this is where we'll see that we human beings, we are not rational. We are irrational beings. We just think we are rational. That's why when you ask somebody, so why do you do that? And they're giving rational reasons. That, no, 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 that's not the reason. People are not rational. We're just, I mean, look at this particular situation. If you, when you analyze it, you two will say, what is wrong with you disciples? But we also do it. Now, the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the sheep with them more than one loaf. So they entered the sheep, the disciples with Jesus, 13 of them, one loaf. Now Jesus began to preach. Next verse. And he charged them saying, take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the herod. And so he was teaching, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, the yeast of the herod. And do you know the next verse? These people reason among themselves saying, it's because we have no bread. That's why Jesus is teaching and using leaven. He's disturbing Jesus too. Can you imagine them saying this? Somebody who had worked miracles of loaves. Do you understand what I'm saying here? And you're saying that Jesus, look, Jesus himself, this very thing is affecting Jesus. How could you descend to that point in your consciousness where you think that the almighty Jesus who, who still is now teaching that he's affected? This bread thing. Now hear what Jesus said. Next verse. And when Jesus knew it, he said, why reason ye? Because you have no bread. What lack of thanksgiving will bring a person to? All right? Perceive ye not, neither understand. Have you your heart yet hardened? Next verse. Have on eyes you see not. Have on ears you hear you not. Do you not remember? Don't you remember? Look at the next verse. How could, listen, when I broke five loaves among 5,000, he didn't say how many yet. He said how many baskets full of fragments did you take home? They said 12. If you do mathematics, simple arithmetic, Five loaves fed 5,000 men. How many are we here? 13. One loaf. We had 12 baskets. Excellent. In fact, you should have said to yourself, we're about to have a boat sinking miracle here. That's what you should be thinking. Why were they thinking that? Which means that, listen, hear what I'm saying in spirit. When you are in need, if you remember something God has done, you will know you're about to have a boat sinking. Do you get what I'm saying? So do you agree it is irrational not to give thanks? Except you are saying, let us ask God to withdraw everything he has done in your life from you. Uh -huh. There is something somewhere that will make you whole. There is something somewhere that will make you complete. Do you get what I'm saying? There is something somewhere that once you go to that place and you go and start thanking God for that, stuff will happen. Look at what he said next. When I broke, um, when, when, and when seven among, and uh, when, and when seven among 4,000, how many baskets full did you take up? They said, seven. You took seven baskets. And he said unto him, how is it that you do not understand? Don't you understand that this one loaf, look, look at the starting verse, verse 14. The Bible says in verse 14, Quickly, go back to bed. And the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Do you not know in God's sovereignty, he made them forget to experience a miracle? Do you get what I'm saying? Gratitude. Psalm 78, verse 8 to 11. And that I might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, 
that set not their heart aright, in whose spirit their spirit was not steadfast with God. And the children of Ephraim, being armed or being talented, being gifted, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Once people get in a difficult situation, we, they, you see, once there's a challenge, we forget what happened. They were singing at the Red Sea. By the time they got to the next place, they forgot. When they were singing that Red Sea song, you would think that these people and God, they are one forever. The way they were dancing at it, you will not know that somebody who was dancing, dancing, that they got a job, will not come after three months and say that they, these terrible people, they, the same person who gave you the job is now terrible. Something is wrong. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me tell you a law in life I found out. Let me tell you a law. Nobody in this world has helped me that somebody blessed me. I do not. There is nothing you want to do. Nothing you want to do to me. You are in a sacred place. Even if you are behaving mad, just park him somewhere. I will not. Are you feeling sad? Somebody gave you your first opportunity in life. Somebody put you on. Somebody gave you the first job. Somebody opened the door for you. You will not be where you are today without that. And you look that person in the eye. <laughs> look at this here. That's why the Bible says, when a man doesn't honor his father and mother, which means your point of entry into life, that life can't go well. That's the law. Let's put it here. And they kept not the covenant and refused to walk in his law. What's the next thing? Next verse. All right, they forgot. And forgot his works, the wonders that he had shown them. So there's a tendency when Goliath comes to forget. There's a tendency when something happens to forget and to now judge God on that. And to look at it and talk as though that's just it. And the key to solving that one is you going and showing deep gratitude to God. Let me show you a scripture while meditating on it. I've never seen this scripture in this light. Genesis 41, verse 29 and 30. And the Bible tells us, Behold, there came seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt. Seven years of great plenty. Then what happened? And there shall arise after them seven years of what? Famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten. You see, what caused their problem was that when the famine came, they forgot the blessing. And the Bible says, and the famine shall do what? Consume the land. People are only consumed by things when they forget what God had done prior to that thing. So in a business, COVID came. True. Caused a downturn in some businesses. But before the COVID, you are on an upward trajectory. Go back to pre-COVID. And begin to rejoice and thank him for that. And post-COVID will be an enlargement on pre-COVID. Do you get what I'm saying? How will it come? Leave that one to God. Because it's the same way you hold the loaf. Where are we going to get the loaves to feed? Inside it, something will come out. What does that mean? Somebody you met at that particular point in time will call you and say thank you. All right, for what you did. And you know what? There's something bigger that you should do and open it up. Uh, my friends from school, they, they're in oil business. Now. If I call their names, you know them. I, I said, how do you get it? I said, we're selling shirts. We went to England. We came back. We started selling TM new shirts somewhere. One of our clients was the one that said, you people, you people treat me very well. Don't you want to sell oil? Inside selling of shirts, there can be oil. It's still what, what I was going to tell him. He said, Pastor, pray for me on the flight. I said, this spot where you are is where the person, somebody will walk into this plane that will open the door for the next level in your life. That's the way it works. It's where you are that things up. Joseph was in prison. They met him there. They break through. It meets you where you are. And that's why people don't like people with moods. You even must be a grateful person. Are you following what I'm saying so let me close with this scripture. How do you become more than a conqueror? Psalm 44, 17, all right, to 20. Okay? All this came upon us. 
The psalmist said, yet we haven't forgotten thee. You know, it would have taken time to get there, but God showed me enough. The degree to which you forget God for the things he has done is the same degree to which men will forget you. That's in their conversations, your name won't just come up. It is after. They'll say, hey, and we forgot about this. Wow. He will have been good for the job. They will forget. The degree to which you forget God is the degree to which men to forget. All right, for thanksgiving is a form of giving, and the measure you give shall be given back to you. This came upon us, yet we haven't forgotten thee. Neither have we dealt falsely in thy covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from thy way. Thou, though thou hast so broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death, he said, if we have forgotten thy name, O Lord, or stretched our hand, which means in the midst of that, God, we are thanking you for the things you have done in our lives. Look at what it says next. It says, verse 21, shall not God search it out and know the secrets of the heart? Verse 22, yea, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. That's where Paul got it from. And the next verse says, in Romans, in all these things, we are more than who? Conquerors. The more than conquerors comes as a result of you. When you are going through things, you don't forget what God has done. Some of you today look and say things, and you've forgotten you went through school. You don't know how you went through school. There was somebody who was a roommate who was giving you things, feeding you doing stuff for you. That same thing can be somebody handing you business with millions if you are grateful for that person. Do you understand what I'm saying? God will have amplified it, blown it up. You know what God told me once? He said, once a person has gotten a job, if they have gratitude in their hearts, they will never be without work. What happens is that you cost the place where they first of all gave you a helping hand. I went somewhere, they introduced me, I spotted behind the first person that allowed me to preach. I left my seat to go and meet him where he was, to shake him. Are you fine, sir? I left my seat to go and meet him and shook him, how are you? Are you following me, Don't forget where the thing, because it's a spiritual principle. Darkness may cover but the person who remembers God emerges from it more than a conqueror. So before we go into, well, um, we have tell testimonies, but let's just spend two minutes praying in the Spirit. I just want to pray, telling the Holy Spirit, bring to my remembrance. Bring to my remembrance now what you saved me from, accidents. Some of you survived cancer. Some of you, there's, I mean, you won't even have the mouth to complain. You survived that. You, you survived this. Some of you have been through things that nobody else knows. Only you and God. They are too deep to be shared with any person. That God preserved you. Pray up those things. Don't let Satan fill those wells and cause you to forget. And this morning as you go into Thanksgiving, let that feeling be expressed that God have come with this feeling to you of thanks, of gratitude, of joy. I pray and I declare over every single person under the sound of my voice, whether you are in this auditorium or you are online connecting with this service, that as you go into this minute thanking God, this is what God told me. He said there are things that he has prepared for you this year that you have no knowledge of. 
There were things that you didn't even confess because you had no knowledge of the fact that these were packages he had in store for you for this year. And that several people have not yet entered into it. That before this year ends, as you enter into this place of thanksgiving, those things will begin to open up to you in strange events and opportunities. And these last few days will be such with encounters with the Spirit of God and His holy angels. This will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.